Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Oh, gosh, it takes people to live now. That makes a difference. All right, thank you for coming to uh, what is uh, our first Super Council meeting. Uh, this meeting is, uh, as you can see, with the school board over here, City of Chipley and the, and the Washington County VOCC. And basically, this is a workshop. So basically, what we wanted to do from the Chamber's perspective was to bring the elected bodies together, these three elected bodies together, and let them talk about what is on their plate, what may keep them up at night, some of the issues that they're dealing with, because many times, as we know, they never read together. So they only read what's going on. This is going to be the first time where we can see if there's any commonality that we can work together through different governments. So it's going to be a good conversation, and that's all we want is a good conversation. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I got a couple ground rules. If you leave this building, the door is locked behind you. So if you leave, unless you've tagged up with somebody to come let you back in, you're out. That's not Ted's. Y'all stay. Y'all come in. That comes soon enough. Also, if you have a cell phone on, please go ahead and put it on our library. I'm getting ready to put mine. That does somebody a call. All right. Uh, I'd like to uh, start with uh, what we do. Uh, most of our meetings in Washington County, that is standing give an invocation and then a pledge of allegiance. I'd like that to lead us in the invocation. I'd like Jim Pan to lead us in the pledge. And the flag is right there. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together in this uh, beautiful community that you bless us with in this country that uh, has the tremendous freedoms that we enjoy. And uh, we thank you for the way you bless us. We pray that you would uh, honor all that we do and say tonight that it would be glory and honor to you, but it would also better our county and our community for all of uh, the folks um, that live here. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good, thank you. Uh, before we get with the uh, elected bodies, I've asked uh, uh, Terry just to say a few words about what's going on at the chamber, followed by Richard Williams. I know many of y'all know Richard Williams. He is the executive director of uh, Career Source. He's also the executive director of uh, the Regional Economic Development Arm, Opportunity Florida. And he's going to give you some information that you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to. So Terry, would you start off? Yeah, before we do that, let's go ahead and let everybody get Yeah, we need this meeting. I'm sorry. Gavin, then your workshop. All right. Hey, can we do a roll call? Excuse the order, Miss. Commissioner Bush? Yeah. Here. Commissioner Kent? Present. Commissioner Abbott? Here. Commissioner Hawkins? Here. Mr. Joyner? Absent. We'll call the Washington School Board workshop in session. You know the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. aye. The agenda's about. Good evening. I call this meeting to order. Uh, this is City Council members. Uh, Dan and this. City manager. City manager. This is the uh, Council of Ward 2. I'm the mayor. It's Ellis the Council at Large. All right, we're good to go. We're good to go. Appreciate everybody coming today. Uh, we're excited to have this a historic day in Washington County. Uh, this has never happened before. And uh, so we're excited from the Chamber and the EDC to be bringing everybody together. Uh, as you know, over the past uh, a couple of years, the EDC has made an extreme effort to try and bring together and improve communication. Uh, we've had several sessions where we talk about uh, issues facing the county, opportunities that we uh, need to work toward, and uh, things that we need to overcome, and try and help us get a vision of how we need to move forward as a county. And one of the things that we continue to realize is we've got to improve communication between the elected boards uh, in Washington County. So what we hope it, today is just the beginning 
and that we can have additional meetings like this in the future. Uh, we would like to also expand it and bring in other city councils from the other municipalities uh, in the county as well. But we wanted to kind of get it kick started off tonight uh, with the city of Chipley, uh, the county commission, and the school board, and uh, kind of figure out the format, see what works, and uh, talk about issues and opportunities. Um, as you know, we've got a lot of different opportunities as a county, uh, but one of the things that we need to do is we need to think about all the wins that we've had. There are some extremely positive things that have been going on in Washington County over the last several years. Uh, we've got a brand new courthouse. We've got a brand new school. We've got four laning happen of 77 and, and 79. Um, there's been a, an economic recovery as such uh, in, in the state of Florida and in the country as a whole. But one of the things that you will realize is that rural communities across the country are not realizing that economic renewal like many of the urban areas are. There's a lot of factors at play there, and we've, we've delved into and talked about a lot of those issues, but those are the things that we've got to figure out how to tackle them head on. And it's going to take a group effort. It's going to take a lot of visionary thinking uh, to try and move forward and see what we can do. Um, I believe it was, uh, and there's going to be some difficult uh, decisions that have to be made, but bottom line is we have to create a vision and then all be working toward that. Uh, I think it was Babe Ruth that said that every strike just brings me closer to the next home run. And that's what we need to have, the approach that we need to take, is there's going to be some strikes, there's going to be some difficulties, there's some hurdles, there's definitely some headwinds in front of us for rural counties. But there's a lot of work being done to try and, and help us move <coughs> forward by all of these boards and uh, a lot of other folks that are volunteering here in Washington County. So with that said, what I would like to do is turn it over to Richard Williams. He's been a part of helping get Opportunity Florida uh, back on its feet and moving forward and being the force that it should be for rural uh, communities. And so I'm going to let uh, Richard come and give you a, a, an update. Yeah. And so, can you No, I think you're fine. Can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, and I apologize a little bit for my voice. Uh, I think the allergies have got me just a little bit here. But a couple things I want to go over. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, I watched the Super Council process over in Calhoun County that, that they put in place. And I've seen what that could do. Uh, some of you may have heard about the new high school that they've got over at Alpha. Well, one of the hurdles that they had was trying to figure out how to handle the wastewater situation there. And, you know, so you've got the city of Alpha and the school board trying to figure out how they're going to handle that. Well, down in Bluntstown, they had capacity, but they couldn't figure out how to get the lines run up. So what you ended up having was you had Calhoun County, the city of Bluntstown, and the city of Alpha come together through their city council, and they started talking because in their own meetings, nobody knew what the other one was doing. But when they got together and they started talking about it, all of a sudden it started being, well, wait a minute, we can solve this. And what ended up happening is because those three came together, they go to the legislature, and they ended up getting the money to run a sewer line all the way up to Alpha from Bluntstown, which, by the way, also opened up all of Highway 71 between those two for some development. But that started at the Super Council process because a lot of different things, you've got people, they don't talk, can't talk, you don't necessarily attend each other's meetings, you don't necessarily know what each other are facing. So they found in Calhoun County, at least, that that's become a good way for the different groups to understand more about what the others are doing and what they're up against and, and ways that they can work together. And so that worked out really well for their community, and especially in that one example. <coughs> Uh, some of you have heard some of these numbers before, but Ted asked me what, what really worries me right now. Terry touched on it, and it's the numbers in rural Florida, but especially here in Northwest Florida. So when you look at it, we're, we're looking at labor numbers here in the state of Florida since 2010. Since 2010, the labor force, so that's the number of people either working or looking for work, in the state of Florida has gone up by 5%. Here in Washington County, you are down by 6.8%. Across the whole Opportunity Florida region, we're down by 6.5%. Employment numbers, you've all heard the story, the state of Florida is doing great one. Employment in the state of Florida is up by 11.7% from 2010 to 2016. Here in Washington County, you're down by 1.9%. You've actually got fewer people working today that live in this county than you had back in 2010. That's scary to me. All right, um, look at the school district numbers and, and the projections going out from uh, 
the 2010 to 2022 time period, they're expecting the school district populations in the rural area that is north, that's Opportunity, Florida, to go down by about 13 percent. Washington County is expecting a decline. You're doing a little bit better than the region as a whole, but you're you're still hurting. And how much money roughly does that mean? Well, each school kid's going to be worth what? 7,500 bucks, somewhere along from there. So every time that we lose another kid in the school district, we're losing more money that's going out to pay faculty and staff and other things. And where do those faculty and staff spend that money? They spend it right here at home. So that's money that we're losing out of these rural communities. And you figure a 13% drop in population, and I, and I apologize for not knowing the number for Washington off the top of my head, but I know in Jackson County through 2022, they're projecting a thousand student loss. A $7,500 a student, that's a lot of money year after year after year that's gone from your community. But what also scares me as the workforce director is that is our future labor force. Those are the people that once they graduate the school system, once they graduate the technical college, they're going to work. They're going to work in your community, we hope. And so we're losing that future labor force. So at a time when the state of Florida is seeing employment rise and seeing the labor force rise, we're seeing a decline. Where that really hits me at is anybody that's looking at your community in terms of trying to locate a business, what's, one of, what's the number one thing right now that employers are saying that they're worried about? Labor force. That is the number one concern that employers have today, is do you have a labor force? Before they even get to the question of is it a trained or a trainable labor force, they want to know do you have the bodies? That scares me. I think though, each of you play a role moving forward in how we change that. In my opinion, we've got to figure out a way somehow to give people a reason to stay here. And one of those things is jobs. You have got to increase the ability of people to create jobs. You've got to increase the ability of people to maintain those jobs. And we've got to work on ways to entice people to come here with jobs. I don't know how else to turn that around. Um, you know, I've talked with a number of PhDs and some others that have looked at the numbers to confirm that those numbers are indeed right. And they've told me that we basically have three options. Option number one is to wait about 50 years and hopefully it'll turn around. I don't like that option. Option number two is to find gold, rubies, or oil in the ground. Option number three is to get a destination employer to come somewhere in this area so that people actually want to move back here to get a job with. And unfortunately, somebody told me the most likely of those options might be finding the gold oil, oil or rubies in the ground. But that's given the current situation. I think there are some things that we can do to change that form. And we are working hard. I, I do want to thank all of y'all because we've had a lot of cooperation out of Washington County in the past with Opportunity Florida and our efforts. We've got some things going on. We're trying to, to, to make a a difference in the region. We've had some projects that were working. Unfortunately, the, uh, the legislature is not exactly cooperating this session. Um, <clears throat> it has been a, one of the most interesting sessions that I've seen in a long time, and it looks from recent uh, news to be getting more and more interesting every day. Uh, we've got some items up that we're trying to get through. We don't know. Right now, we were promised at the start of the session that rural was going to be on everybody's mind. They were going to work for rural. Unfortunately, we got tied up in the fight over Enterprise Florida. Kind of sucked all the air out of the room. A lot of you have read about that. But what you might not realize is what also happened is, is any bill that was moving through the House and the Senate that referred to a statute that included our, our Enterprise Florida in the statute was basically dead. The Senate was going to move it, okay. The House was not going to move it unless you agreed to take the reference to Enterprise Florida out. Well, if you agree to take the reference to Enterprise Florida out, that's fine, but then the Senate's not going to take it up. So we're stuck in the middle. Uh, there were several rural bills that we got to move in the Senate. Some of them moved through all the committees. Some of them finally just stopped because the Senate, quite frankly, realized we're wasting our time. We're not getting any movement on the other side, so what are we going to do? Well, that was good, man. Um, so. With that being said, nothing like embarrassing yourself in front of everybody by wetting your pants, right? <laughs> um, so, so with that being said, I do want to say, you know, what's keeping me up at night, quite frankly, is that labor force issue. And, and how do we start keeping our kids here? 
how do we start building them and, and getting more than just our kids here? And I can tell you from a survey that we did in workforce a number of years ago now, our kids told us the, the brightest kids in the class said they wanted to stay here. They want to be in this area. The kids that reported the lowest rate on averages actually said that they wanted to leave. <coughs> but when we asked them where they thought they would be in 10 years, what they said was the kids that reported out the highest rates thought that they would have to be somewhere else because they didn't see an opportunity for them to be here. The kids that had the lower grade on averages, they said they thought they would be here because they didn't think they'd have an opportunity to leave. That is also scary. So I'm, I'm open to questions. I didn't know, Ted, if that's what you wanted me to cover, if you wanted me to mention anything else. But, but I will tell you, you all have a role that's going forward. From an economic development standpoint, I, I've got to say, you know, you've always been a pleasure to work with here in this county, both as a workforce director and, and as the Opportunity Florida director. Um, and I just hope that continues going forward. If there's anything I can do to help you out, let me know, and we'll be glad to work with you. Uh, why don't you mention, since we're looking for some people to go with us in Michigan? Yeah. yeah. Mississippi. Mississippi. So, how many of you heard about the Golden Triangle area of Mississippi in the 60 Minutes area story? Okay. So, on May 21st, we are taking a bus from Mariana to go to the Golden Triangle of Mississippi. Uh, we will spend the night on the 21st. We'll take tours on the 22nd. Small tour on the morning of the 23rd, and then we'll be coming back. Opportunity Florida is paying for the hotel rooms, the bit, the uh, all of the meals, I think, but one, and the bus trip. We are we have an invitation out to somebody from, from the county to go as a member of, of Opportunity Florida. If you'd like to go, um, we may have a few other slots come over. So if I've got some folks, you know, from leadership positions that are interested in going, we need to know that. We need to know it rather quickly because we are starting to fill all those slots. Um, we are going to meet, if, for those of you that saw the, uh, the article, uh, Joe Max, who is the economic developer from that area, we're going to be spending some time with him. Um, the trip is also being put together for us by Grace Woke. Gray is the former Secretary of Commerce for the state of Florida. And we're going to probably, not confirm for sure, but we're probably going to spend the first night having a barbecue at his parents' house out on the lake. So he grew up right around in that area, so he's really getting us in the doors with some folks. I know we're touring uh, the Packard engine factory that's out there. We're going to tour a couple of, we've got a couple of helicopter sites we're going to tour that's building for Sikorsky and a couple of other military applications. Um, we're also going to be um, meeting with some local officials. I think that's the part that would interest you the most. Is we're going to be meeting with some local officials to talk about the things that they did to turn that area of Mississippi into a, a job loss area, into an area that's created, created thousands of jobs. So if you're interested in that, I can just get up with me and, and we'd be glad to have you go. We really do need to make sure that we've got somebody from all of our member counties attending. Uh, any questions for Richard? All right, very good. Thank you very Thank much, you. Richard. Thank you so much for all your work. Okay. okay. Yeah, what I'm going to do now.